Awesome. So I want to thank you for joining me. This is my first of many calls to come. I used to have a call a lot of years ago um, before like Zoom was really popular and uh, you would just call in. Um, but I've always found these to be really helpful, especially um, I do get a lot of questions and I think these are some of the best ways to answer those questions. So there will be some Q&A. Uh, but I'm really excited because uh, I am going to just kind of reset and reintroduce myself in this space. Uh, most of my network knows me from the Black Business Initiative, um, which is, of course, my main thing, um, something that I love to do is for our community. Uh, but I am also now like evolving into this new space for myself um, and introducing myself in this way. And so um, my I am launching out my own consulting company, Jice Johnson Consulting. So we're keeping it real simple. It's me. I'm consulting. I'm here <laughs> to help. Um, but I just kind of want to reintroduce myself in this space. Uh, because I am a mom. Um, of course, I'm an activist, I'm an investor, I'm a business owner. Um, but also what I've learned over time is that I'm a strategist. And um, and I have learned the art of work-life integration. But in that space of learning work-life integration, which is uh, really where, where this call comes into play, uh, I've learned that a lot of us struggle with figuring out how to integrate our work and our life. And so we keep kind of thinking that the life we want to live is like further down the way, right? It's coming uh, instead of it being here. And I think that's a, you know, uh, um, an antiquated way of thinking about it in this space, because it's almost like the idea that you're going to work, you know, 40 years and retire and then, you know, have that gold watch and a pension, which just isn't the space that we live in anymore, right? And so wanting to be really intentional about how do we do that in, this, in these times? Um, how do we do that effectively? How do we do that and invite our friends and our family into the process? But more importantly, most importantly to me is how do we do that in a space that feels good to ourselves? Um, we have learned, I think, throughout the pandemic, it's highlighted the need for self-care. It's highlighted the need for um, mental health and uh, just being aware of some of the things that we experienced that maybe we weren't aware of because we were constantly in the go of the day, not even in a flow of the day, just in the go. Like we're just, we get up and we just go, right? So how do we come into a space where we can begin to have more of that flow? So um, the other reason why I wanted to start this call is because as I thought about the work-life integration space, I always get a chuckle now. It used to really frustrate me I, because people would be like, how do you do all those things, Jice? And I'm like, with a lot of grace a lot of grace for myself. <laughs> Even when no one else has grace for me, I have to have grace for myself, right? Um, and that's, of course, easier said than done. So that's been another, uh, you know, reason behind wanting to be in this space is to start answering that question, how do you do it all? Uh, because I think sometimes we think we're doing it all, or maybe sometimes we see someone and we think they're doing it all. And, you know, someone may be seeing you and think you're doing it all. And you don't see yourself in that light. You don't have that same, you know, reverence for yourself. And sometimes we don't have that same grace for ourselves. So I think, you know, all of those things are wildly important. So the structure of this uh, call that's going to be happening every week. So it'll be happening every week, um, Wednesday at noon, noon Mountain Standard, Mountain Standard Time. Uh, and so... Um, we're, I'm going to, you know, talk a little bit. I do have some things to talk about. And then I'm going to open up for Q&A because I think that's just important. I think this is an opportunity um, to get up close and personal um, and then have like your specific questions. And if it's not something that I can answer, maybe as we build out this community, there'll be others that can answer um, or add that perspective. And one thing that I have learned is, uh, you know, I can give you my advice. I can give you my opinion. I can tell you uh, but I think most importantly, I can tell you my experience, right? And I think the experience is important because sometimes we hear, oh, you should do this. Or if I were you, I would do that. Or you know what, you you need to do this. And um, those, are th those things are important. But as we kind of get into this first uh, topic today, um, we want to shed some of that, right? Like we want to have information that we can make decisions off of. We don't necessarily want or need someone to tell us what we need to do, especially when it comes to concepts and ideas more so than technical, right? Like you need to get a website. Okay, here's what you need to do to get this website, right? But 
When we're talking about how you are living your life, I think that is more open to how what resonates most with you. And so when you're in that space of what resonates most with you, then it's not necessarily what you should do, but it's more, here's what my experience says. And then what can you take from that and add to your experience? And I think that's wildly important in the concept of agency, right? Like I have the decisions, I have the power to make decisions for myself. And I do that with information. And then I make decisions on what works best for me and my situation, my family, what works best for the way that I perceive things or my worldview or my belief system. So even as we go through question, question and answer, I will make my best attempt to not say what you should do, but really come from a place of my experience tells me this and how does that resonate with you? Um, and so with that being said, I'm going to jump right on into our topic. Um, and so again, all this is going to be around work-life integration uh, in general, but you know, we'll, we'll flesh out some pieces. But I really think as kind of a foundational conversation in that we have to talk about this idea of releasing expectations. Bruce Lee said, I am not in this world to live up to your expectations and you are not in this world to live up to mine. And I think that is, it's, it's such a simple quote, but it's wildly profound, right? I am here, I have a purpose. And while my purpose and your purpose may come and cross paths, my purpose is not here for you and your purpose is not here for me. We may even find places where um, we are able to build off of each other's purposes, right? But I, my purpose is for me and your purpose is here for you. And so um, I want to talk about that from a perspective of like filling a cup and emptying a cup. But I first want to start by thinking about how we undo the expectations that were imposed on us, most specifically from childhood. Because as a parent, um, we have a responsibility to raise our children in a way that we believe to be the quote unquote right way, right? Um, and that, you know, for I'm a parent, I have three children. Uh, I am one of six siblings. Uh, two of them were raised in the home with me. And we all have wildly uh, different personalities, different talents, different skills, different things that resonate with us. And so as a parent, it can be really difficult to think through, how do I appeal to what this child may be uh, needing, right, versus maybe what this child might be needing? You might have one who's very independent. You might have one who's very dependent. You might have one who's artistic. You might have one who's analytical. Like, how, as a parent, do you speak to a lot of those needs? And because oftentimes our needs weren't nurtured, I think we don't always know what that looks like when it's time for us to nurture someone else's needs. Most importantly, when it's time for us to nurture multiple needs in the same household, it's like I'm dealing with that myself all the time, trying to think through different ages, different interests, different, uh, you know, one, one of my children um, is has uh, mental health issues. And so uh, she was born two and a half months premature, uh, whereas I have two children who were born full term, right? And so like even their birth story is so wildly different that their life experiences are different. I have two that are being raised together. I have one that spent the first 10 years as a as a uh, single or only child. So how do you begin to like nurture those things and how do you have grace for yourself in the parenting process, um, you know, when you're thinking about what that looks like for your children? So I've had to come from that space of having grace for my parents as a parent now, <laughs> thinking back to all the things that I think my mom did or my dad did that just messed me up, right? Um, and now, now as a parent saying, oh, wow, like, actually, I have so much more grace for you because I just, I had no idea how tough it is to do this job as a parent. Um, but so all of us, you know, if you're here, you are a child of somebody. And so whether you were raised by your biological parents or someone in your family or someone outside of your family, whether you came from a good home or you came from a not so wholesome space, no matter what, we all have experiences and expectations that were imposed on us from that childhood space. And spending time undoing those things, because when you're in that space, oftentimes you're reminded like, there's someone that is over you. And when you bring that back to the quote that I said, which is, I'm not here for you and you're not here for me, right? How do you marry those concepts of someone pouring 
uh, expectations into you and you having to figure out how to live up to someone's expectations in childhood and then making the transition into adulthood to say, I actually need to release some of those expectations so that I have the agency to direct and control my life in the way that resonates best with me. So there's a lot of undoing that has to happen in that space because we are fed a lot of concepts that may still resonate with us in adulthood or may not. And those are the determinations that we have to, um, that we need to be able to make. Does this resonate with me and I'm going to keep it or does it not resonate with me and I have to learn the art of releasing it? So one of the things that I've learned is that when we hold all these expectations and those expectations can come from our parents, they can come from um, other family members, they can come from society, they can come from religion, they can come from school, they can come from um, television and, you know, other source, sources of media that have told us what we should think, how we should behave, you know, what, how we should um, perceive others, how we want others to perceive us, what's considered success, all of those things, um, is that we often come to new experiences or our current experience with a full cup. So how can we receive what's for us if our expectation cup is full? All of our actions are based off of somebody's expectation of us, an expectation of what type of career field it is that we're supposed to go into, what's going to be successful, what success actually looks like. So am I making the type of money that I should be making? What does successful parenting look like? Am I the proper weight that I should be? Um, you know, what is considered professional, uh, what, you know, all of those different ideas that flow into who we are, we can tie those into some expectation somewhere from someone that is probably imposed. Those. Some of us are even living up to what someone told us we can't be, right? How many of you are, um, or, or, you know, tap in if you're familiar with Lisa Nichols? Um, Lisa Nichols, I love her to life. Um, I've never had the opportunity to meet her, but maybe one day, crossing fingers. And so uh, Lisa Nichols talks about, so she's an accomplished author. If you're not, if you're not familiar with Lisa, um, I would say she is, um, so she's a Black woman that is um, a, a, a motivational speaker. She's an author. She's a coach. Um, she's great. And so she has this, you know, story, a lot, you know, a lot of these stories, uh, I don't want to say rags to riches, but kind of a rags to riches story, you know, where she was, where she is now. So one of the things that Lisa talked about as an accomplished author is the fact that she had a teacher who told her that her paper was so bad, she should never write again, right? So now, of course, as an accomplished author, like there's this space of like, take that, take that, take that, you know, you ain't gonna tell me nothing. You know, I lived, I'm, I'm, I'm an amazing writer. Um, there's pros and cons to that because you can definitely use what someone has said to you that you reject as fuel to like push you to your next level. But how far do you let that fuel take you? Because sometimes you can find yourself living in a space of I'm going to show you, right? I'll come back to this Bruce Lee quote. I'm not in this world for you and you're not in this world for me. How much of my life is dedicated to proving you right or proving you wrong? How much rent-free space do you get to take up in my head that my actions and my decisions are predicated upon proving you right or proving you wrong? And so coming to the space of releasing those expectations, again, this, these are not easy things. These are things we have to sit with. So I'm 38 years old. I'm learning to say that proudly. I'm almost 40. Still working through that, guys. I'm working through that. So I'm almost 40. Um, when I was growing up, the, there was an expectation that we were going to go to college. This is just what it was. So my mom um, almost didn't graduate high school. She did not graduate any, uh, she didn't graduate from college. My father had a, a community college degree. Um, or I think, he, I don't know if it's a degree. I think he went to community college. And I think that's as far as he got before he got into the workforce. And so my parents are super proud. My dad has six kids. My mom, three of them are with my mom. Um, and actually just two days ago, they celebrated 41 years of marriage. So I'm very um, proud of them for that. But my parents, uh, so my dad had a total of six kids and it was expected 
that we were going to graduate high school and we were going to go to college. And so out of six of those kids, five of them graduated high school and went to college. And so here comes Jice. <laughs> I gotta be different. I decide I'm going to the military. Not only did I decide I was going to the military, I went to the military in 2002. So we can all remember in 2001, there was 9-11. So it was like, what do you mean you're going into the military, right? Like the country is at war. And so that was like this, you know, wild situation. The country is at war. What do you mean you're going to the military? Why aren't you going to college? This is expected of you. So there was this huge fight in my home around me going to the military. Um, if any of you are familiar with the military, they have this thing called the delayed entry program. So basically, in short, this program is where you can basically sign up in college, I'm sorry, in high school, and you can, you can be in the military for a year before you actually go to basic training. And all that really does is you're delayed entry in, but you have time in service. And time in service helps you get promoted. So you go in as a higher level than you would if you had just gone in immediately following high school. So now I'm having this argument with my parents. Like, I'm going in, and I need you guys to sign these delayed entry papers so that I could get in, so I could have a higher... Um, rank when I got in. And I'm telling them, I'm, go I'm belligerent. Now I'm going, you're not going to stop me. But if you don't sign these papers, you're going to hurt me because I'm not going to get this rank, right? So like this just huge fight. Finally, my dad, you know, he kind of twists my mom's arm and he's like, sign the papers, you know, she's going, sign the papers, right? So they sign the papers, I go in. I struggled with my parents for years and years about my decision to go into the military. Like my parents have forgot, I'm a veteran. My parents have forgotten to call me on Veterans Day because that's just not what they care about. And so my sister, she went on to be a teacher. Um, my parents, they like posted her degree of, about, upon the mantle. My brother is an EMT and a firefighter. It's like, they're posting pictures all over. Look at my son, the firefighter. And then it's like, Oh yeah, and then there's Jice. And so at 37 years old, so this is how recent this is, okay? I went into the military at 18. At 37 years old was the first time that I addressed my parents and I said, I just want to acknowledge that I actually hire people and I pay other people salaries. I just want to acknowledge that my income exceeds both of their incomes combined. Like, I just want to make some acknowledgement that while you see them as this thing, right, I have this thing. And my parents, they apologize and all that type of stuff. And, you know, and I'm close to my parents. Like, we don't have a strained relationship. But, it, but you cannot have a strained relationship and still be living with the expectations that you think someone has of you. And I remember last year when we had this conversation, you know, they apologized. But really, my dad probably spent the most time kind of unpacking this with me. And I kept asking myself, why do I care so much about them acknowledging my success? Why is that so important to me? And of course, you can break it down. You know, they're my parents and I love them and they love me. And you, But at the end of the day, they are not in this world for me and I am not in this world for them. And while it feels good to have that acknowledgement, I had to recognize, I had to empty my cup and release the fact that I am not, I will never live up to this expectation that they have because that's just not my space. I went on to get both a bachelor's and a master's degree, but I have my degree sitting here in my office. My, my sister and brother's degrees are sitting at my parents' house hung up on the wall, right? And I had to release that. And that was a process of emptying my cup of that expectation and having the courage to release myself from that expectation because I am living in my own space and my space is good and I'm happy there. And so there's a lot of undoing that we have to do in the concept of releasing our expectations. But what I realize is that you cannot define your own version of success when you're still holding on to what someone else has told you is successful. And so when you're thinking about how to have agency and control over your life, you have to start asking yourself, are you holding on to those expectations that someone else told you 
you needed to have in order to see success. Because oftentimes those expectations are not mutually set, right? I didn't agree that I needed to go to college. They told me I needed to go to college. That was the expectation. And so as you get older and you begin to enter into mutual relationships, mutual relationships are successful when expectations have been mutually set. I expect this of you, you expect this of me, we are in agreement of these expectations, and then we can be held accountable to those expectations that we both agreed on. In our younger selves, we don't have that, that agency to come into mutual agreement of expectations. So they are placed on us and we grow up in those spaces. And oftentimes they really affect our ability to be happy in our present day life because we're holding on to something that we have no business holding on to. And we're trying to live up to someone else's version of whether we're right, wrong, if we've succeeded in what they believe that we should be succeeding in or we haven't. And those expectations are oftentimes times tied to beliefs. Again, beliefs on success, beliefs on what's right, beliefs on what is wrong. And so then we're, we're, we struggle through guilt trying to figure out, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? And so we're not even sure oftentimes if those beliefs are our beliefs or not. Like how many things have you believed at one point and then as you've gotten older or you continue to grow, you've discovered that's actually not a belief that I hold. I don't believe that to be true. And then you've had to release those beliefs. And those beliefs are oftentimes tied to someone's expectation of how you should behave. So releasing expectations, it takes a lot of courage. Um, and you also have to build up your, your confidence in yourself in order to do that. And so before I open up for some Q&A, I have an exercise that I'm hoping that you'll spend some time in uh, for yourself over the next week or so. And that's reflecting on at least one expectation that you know that you're holding onto and asking yourself, how is it impacting you? Is it serving you still? How did you come about getting that expectation? And is that an expectation that needs to stay? It's one that you believe in. Or is it an expectation that you actually don't believe in now that you're consciously thinking about it and you need to start working on the process of releasing it? There are expectations in every area of our life. And so there's no one way to just empty out all the expectations that we have. But once we're aware that we are having those expectations placed on us, that gives us the agency to shine a light on them and look at them and ask ourselves, where did this expectation come from? Is it serving me? Is it something I believe in? And does it stay or does it go? So I hope that you'll engage in that this week. So I'm gonna open up if there are any questions. That's what I have for you today on our first call. Hopefully that was helpful and impactful. And if there are any questions, you can um, feel free to, there's not that many of us in here, so you don't have to raise your hand or anything, you can come off mute if you do have a question. And I'd love to um, do my best to share my experience um, in helping you get to, to your answer. Hey, Sister Joyce, how we doing? Good. Good. Hey, I don't have a question. I do just have a comment. I would just want to say thank you so much for this midday motivation, midweek motivation, and a constant reminder that, uh, you know, you're definitely a living testimony of, of what you're sharing with us. And I just appreciate all that you have done, all that you are doing, all that you continue to do for our community. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate you and I'll be here with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thank you for that. I 1000% agree. Awesome. Because I have been um, looking at your content and following the BBI business, and it's been some years now. And as Mr. Bates said, you are living what you were speaking about. And Thank it's you. very commendable. I've learned a lot from you, and I didn't even know you. <laughs> And then I had so many questions for you over the years. And then to see this come up, I was so excited. Like I'll finally get to ask her some questions because I was going to pepper you with them when I saw you at the summit. 
<laughs> oh, so no. I, like, All right. I gotta wait till next year but no thank you thank you for doing this much appreciated of course well feel free to hit me with some questions this is definitely an opportunity to ask them they don't have to be related to um, necessarily releasing expectations but I'm here to answer questions um, as you see I don't have a question today but I okay. Will. I will. <laughs> no worries. I'll be right here every Wednesday. So that'll be a good opportunity. <laughs> yes. Okay. Are there any questions? If there's not, no worries. I'll give you guys back 30 minutes of your lunch hour. Um, but yeah, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And then if not, we'll be here next week. Awesome. All right. Well, I just want to thank you all for um, joining my call. This is my first one. So please spread the word if you found this valuable. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to continuing this. Um, my company is officially launching here in a couple of weeks, but this is really just, you know, kind of jumping back into this space of being intentional to be connected to the community, make sure that I am able to answer questions and really encourage you, you know, how do you, uh, to move beyond just what it is that you do for your business um, and think about how it is that you want to live your life. And so I'm very excited to be able to bring um, my experiences to the table. And I appreciate all of you for joining. Thank you. Thank you.